Let's quickly go to Romans 8, <coughs> Romans 12. Uh, we want to stop exactly, I hope to stop at 12.30 today. In the evening we have a special meeting at uh, Brother Binu's house. We want to welcome all of you. I think, sorry, I forgot to tell Brother Chalain about it. Uh, we'll have a combined meeting in Brother Binu's house. We have a man of God who will be ministering there. Sunday mornings we do not allow outside guests to preach anymore. But evening meetings, Saturday evenings, they all can come and preach. So we have somebody in the evening. Tell your Bibles. If you have your Bibles, please take it. Uh, okay, some of you want to leave now. It's a good time. Please feel free uh, to leave your. Yeah, please feel free. Please don't feel embarrassed. You have freedom in the church. You know it. <coughs> okay. Romans tell those who have your Bibles, all the little children in the Sunday school. I'm sorry, you must take your Bibles if you can read. Take your Bibles, all of you. We all grew up in good discipline. I don't want to go to that discipline. Amen. And if you have children who cannot read the Bible but who can listen, keep them with you so they can you can show them the scriptures and they can read it. Uh, I'm speaking to my family here this morning. All of you are my family in Jesus' name. If you have a problem with listening to the word of God, come and meet me personally. I've been observing many of you for many years. Uh, you seem to get very distracted, you begin to get irritated, upset, you know. As a man of God, I can clearly see through. These are all ailments of the soul where you need help. Uh, I'm putting my heart and soul, I'm putting my best. And I am committed to see that you bear fruit. I will not let go until I see that you bear fruit. Amen. Amen. Here is a one thing I want you to know. You know, it is very easy for me to speak in English. Do you know why we have translation? While many of you know English, you can receive a grab or quit the word only in a mother tongue. That is the reason why we have the Malayalam friends. It is because we love you. As a result, half the time for the word of God is being spent. If I start speaking only in English, none of you will say anything, I know that. But more than your concern, we are concerned about you. We are going out of the way to make sure you all receive something. This is the labor of love. And translation is not, a, uh, is not an easy thing. Everybody can't do it. Because you have to stay in the anointing. Translating to Malayalam is tough because one word of English can be translated with at least two or three words in Malayalam. It takes more time. He has to do that. He has to keep in time with the anointing. I have sensed the pressure. Sometimes the power of the Lord comes on me. I am about to deliver a word. He struggles. And you know why he struggles? Because many of you, when he comes to the translation, you let your translation go. I mean, your, your focus go here and there. After all this struggle, this man is standing here. And standing here. And all of us, he's sitting there praying. 
we are, we are determined to get the word of God going through. Amen. Amen. Translation of the Tharadu, Namukha Manu Nagana Tharadu, Devaya Tharadu, Puna Paradilek Varivadha Kondu, Devaya Nikar Pratra. You know, I am standing under the speed of the anointing, not Amen. in my speed. In the speed, I am not saying that there is a speed and such and such. So at the end, but when we are doing all these things, you know, people sit as though they are not at all bothered. You know how painful it is. Amen. Devaya Tharadu, Gandhi Mahatma Tharadu, Arhikinna Gavirav Nikar Kondu, this institution and Nikar Kai Kondu, Sigari Kinshya Namen. Don't do that. Say why? Amen. You need to do that. I don't need to preach. <laughs> because God has promised me people's evil people. Hungry people desperate for the world. Hallelujah. God. Paul was building on no other man's foundation. I also learned the secret behind it, wisdom behind it. I mean, and I saw that God is also shaping and changing the ministry of this church according to Ephesians 3 8. You can read it sometime, you will understand. God is changing the vision of this church. Amen. There was a time we had to speak to the house of Israel. I think so. People? Also, uh, please uh, make it a point to meet our friends. We are so happy to see them today. God bless them. Okay, you have your Bibles? All right. Go to Romans 12. One verse. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Quickly look into the Malayalam part of it, just verse 1. Right here, I want it. Yes, Those of you know English and Malayalam, can you see any difference between these two verses? Those of you who do not, I'll explain it to you. But those who do not know, can you show me one uh, difference? between the two translations. It's very important. Mm -hmm. Take it verse by verse to word to word. You see, it says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, all those things are here. Sahodan Mare, Devatanamanat Sariva, or Picha Tingala Bhavod Bikinada. That you present your body is a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God. Holy, acceptable unto God. In Malayalam, Bhutti Ulla Aradhanayai. Ningala Shari Nagala Jeeva and Vishuddhi Devatana. Life is there. Then. Okay. What is Bhutti Ulla? Came into the Malayalam translation. Okay. English it is not there directly. Okay. Which is your reasonable service is not there in, in the Malayalam translation. Did you see that? Okay. It's not there. Whereas they have added Bhutti Ulla in the Malayalam. Which is a replacement for reasonable service. Reasonable service in the Bhagavata Buddhi Ula Ara the Malayal Chatrika. Malayalam Buddhi means intelligent worship. Amen. Amen. Malayalam Buddhi Varaja, Namade, Ari Vindi Ara. Where did it come from? I want you to know, I want you to focus on this word today, your reasonable service. We will leave with a small instruction, that's all, your life is going to change. The word reasonable is translated from the Greek word logikos. The word logikos is also connected to the word logos. How many of you know that the word of God is available in two forms? Number one, Logos, which is the written word of God. Number two, the Rema word of God, which is the spoken word of God. When we preach the written word of God, during preaching, the Rema word of God manifests according to the needs of the people. So you know Logos and Rema. 
going to tell you something probably you never heard. In the first century church, there were no rules or commandments given or taken from the Mosaic law. Everything was new. Everything was fresh. And the church was not focused on following the commandments. The church was focused on the grace of God. Amen. I want to tell that again. They were not focused on the commandments of the Jewish law. They were focused on grace. Amen. Amen. Church, I want to say that again. The early churches, under the early apostles, they were not focused on the commandments, they were focused on grace. Did you get that point? The early, say with me, the early church was focused on grace and not the commandments of the law. Why? Look into John chapter 1, verses 14 to 17. You see the relationship of grace and the law. Amen. Ah, this is the one. Look at this. Look at this. I want all to focus here. So let me let me get your attention again. We are talking about the early church where the focus was on grace and not the law. Not even the commandments of Moses. Now listen to me. Not even the Ten Commandments. Did you get it? Why? I'm telling you why. Look at this. The law was given by Moses. But then the, the Bible says, but, which means even then, or, or against it, or after it, or greater than that, grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. So the early church was focused on Grace and the truth which came by Jesus Christ. Amen. That is why the early church was focused on grace. But Paul's time, a lot of teachers of the law came. They began to tell the people what to do and what not to do. And the people came under the law again. And throughout centuries, the church has been under the law. They began to focus on the commandment. <laughs> Thou shalt not murder. Amen. That is what, not what Jesus came to say. Jesus said, I know you have a capability of killing other people. You have murder in your heart. But my grace in your heart is greater than that. You know, a lot of people live in condemnation. Because inside their heart, they sometimes feel anger, rage, jealousy, hypocrisy, and they come down. And the devil and the teachers of the law have kept the truth away from the people of God. My child, whatever your situation in the heart is, grace is greater than that. I need two or three qualities quickly. I want to show a truth. Quickly. Remember, grace. Grace is whoever ready come. God is always looking for a building person. Come on. Whoever you are, whatever age. Hallelujah. Look at this. Let's say this is a man's heart. 
Chetik guy, he didn't make the man. It's a man's heart. He didn't make the man. Okay. That is the, these three people are living in a man's heart. He moved away and he didn't make the man's heart. Let us say, God forbid, let us say these are three bad things. I mean, you know, most of my moon, the guy, Almighty God, Almighty God always looks into the heart. I mean, so I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm Okay, he's looking into the heart. And then he sees these three things. And he gave the law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. The law and these things are on the same level. But they kept on failing. Because when the law said no, the sin in the heart began to abound. Now you see, uh, Stephen, come here. Stephen, come here. Come, come. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. So look at this. Okay, this is grace. Be grace you know. Be grace you know. Okay, you see, here is the law. I am, I am Mr. Moses. So I come and try to stop them. But sin keeps on pushing back. Before the law was there, there was no sin felt. Amen, amen. Are you watching this? Are you yeah. But when Moses came with the law, he pushed them back, he pushed sin back. But sin began to push the law back. Now the people in the heart began to feel the pressure of sin more. Amen. But Jesus came. And I asked you, Jesus came. What did he do? He died for these sins. He became sin. That means. He came in the place of sin. Now you don't see sin. Moses is out of the picture. Now instead of Moses, Jesus comes with a helping hand. Sin is no longer active. Because you are under grace. And sin will they cannot push anymore. Because their power is lost. Instead of them, Jesus is there. Amen. Praise God. So these people cannot be active anymore. Amen. Thank you, Thank you Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. In spite of this truth taking place, the early church slowly pushed Jesus out of the out of the temple. Amen. They said, no, 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 Jesus is there, grace is there, we acknowledge all these things. But the Ten Commandments is given by the by Moses, you have to follow it. When the law comes back, sin revives again. There are people still struggling, Lord, I am still not clean enough. I still have dirty thoughts going through me. I still have evil thoughts going through me. I have divisive spirit going through me. I look at my sister, praise the Lord, mm, in my heart. Oh, I am a sinner. And then you come to the Lord's table. Lord, make me holy. The whole, you know, the Lord's table is like going to a funeral. And you cannot have a Lord's table without telling people at least one week ahead. Because they have to be prepared for the Lord's table. Because they are under the law. Because the heart is still full of lust. People of God, grace is above this. Jesus came so that we may have grace. Hallelujah. What does grace do? Grace does not call sin any other name. 
For example, if I always want to kill Pastor George, Christ doesn't call it anything else. It calls a spirit of murder. Amen. Christ does one more thing. My son, I will make sure that you will never do it. My daughter, I will make sure that sinful nature will never overcome you. My child, I will make sure that you will never have a divisive spirit in your life. That is the new covenant. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you get it? So remember, you have been brought or brought out of the law. Amen. So much with in your mind. Amen. No, no, with, with so much in your mind. Amen. I want you to now come back to the place where we are studying. Amen. We are talking about a reasonable service, right? Amen. Amen. What is that reasonable service Paul is talking about? At early church. Without any law. But the word of God was revealed in the early church. The truth of the new covenant was preached in the early church. And the Roman church knew very well that worship was to be done in the body, that Christ was inside the body. How many of you knew the truth? You know, we go to a church, we go to a building to worship. Amen. You know, we, we go to church. What people mean is we are going to the church building. Amen. God, that is an Old Testament Moses concept. Church, you are the church. You are the living temple of God. <laughs> Coming together has another dynamics. We'll, we'll talk about it later. But remember, you are the temple of the living God. First Corinthians 3 16. Look at that. Know ye not that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. Paul is reminding the church at Corinth. That means he had already taught them this truth. It is not written per se in any of the epistles. Amen. But it was a written, it was a taught truth in the early church. Same thing was taught to the Roman church. When Paul went to Athens, look into Acts 17, he brings out this glorious truth. Go to Romans 17, verse 20, 21 and 22. I'm sorry, Acts 17. Okay, verse 22. Uh, verse 24. Read verse 24. Church. Look at this. Now Paul is preaching an evangelical message to the people of Athens. And this is the revelatory message of those days. 
Because even the people of God, the Jewish people who worship Jehovah, they have a temple where they believe Jehovah will come. And their history says that during the time of Solomon, when he built the temple, the glory of the Lord came that the priests could not stand. But now, Paul, who is a Jew, whose forefathers were there when the glory of the Lord came upon the temple, built by man, he is bringing out a contradictory message. The Jewish people said, even the early apostles said, Paul, what are you teaching? We know that the glory of the Lord came upon Solomon's temple. And now you are saying God does not live in anything made by the hands of man. Hallelujah. People of God, how many of you believe this is true? The word and all things therein. God does not dwell in temples made with the hand of man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you, some of you who have come from you know the, the, the Eastern Orthodox uh, rites, uh, which has started from North Africa. Many of you who come from Kerala, that Orthodox Church, the Martoma Church, they're all actually coming from the Eastern Orthodox. Not it all started in North Africa, just for you to know. How many of you are scared to go into the Madhubaha? Amen, Amen. What wrote such a Bachata the other paper? I am a Madhubaha. I am a Madhubaha. I am a Madhubaha. I am a Madhubaha. When they were in that church, you know, I, I used to be in a choir in a, in a church like that. And uh, in front of the Madhubaha, we will all stand there and pour out. Ah, you know, all these things to do. Suddenly, the Madhubaha will open. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, you know, all those uh, forefathers used to know all that uh, the curtain will be open and they will bring in that uh, the, the mud, incense and suddenly like, oh God, father of nation. Two minutes ago, we were fighting and screaming. They were standing like that. Now suddenly when the screen opens, Yandur Bhakti, it is as though they are dead. I said that is the old covenant. You know when people have, when people hear that, that bell, you know, they are so, I used to be. They are so psychologically, attached, emotionally attached to it. You know, they, they have tears coming through their, uh, they're so... If you truly love your fathers, you will follow the God they serve. Amen, amen. They used to serve God. They knew what the Madhubaha was. Amen. Those days are over. When? Jesus died on the cross. When Jesus died on the cross, he said, It is finished. What did he, what did he say was finished? Stop going to a place and considering that place as holy because I, the Holy One, am in you. You are my temple. Children of God, just think, holy God living in you. And it all happens when you gently say, Lord Jesus, 
I receive you as the Lord of my life. Come into my life. Hallelujah. And the King of glory Hallelujah. comes in Amen. and says, My child, Amen. my son, Amen. my daughter. Amen. And if there is a devil Amen. inside, the Lord Jesus is, excuse me, get out. Amen. Now this is my property. Nampaknya ulil wonder, kahiri. Nampaknya ulil ini kita pisah aja, tulisan apa orang tu boleh dapat. Itulah kahiri kita, lelaki tu bawa kita dah, orang wali ada ibu. Itulah wali. That is the truth which the Roman Church knew. Amen. This is the same as the Roman Now, are you clear? Come on, say it. Now they knew. Let's go back to Romans 12. They were communicated this truth, which is what Paul says logikos. It was already conveyed to you. You know. That God is living in you. Therefore, your bodies must be a living sacrifice unto the Lord because your bodies are the temple of the living God. Amen. Did you understand it, church? When the King James Version was written, they still thought that worship was complete in a church building. They did not understand the meaning of this in the spirit. They just saw this word in Greek. Which is logikos. And the English translation is reasonable. This was, this was, the Lord made this clear to me. Because when I looked into these two things, I saw reasonable service. And then I saw this Bukti Ulla. Malayalam translation, this is English translation of the word logikos. It really means, I have, we have taught you from the word that God no more lives in any temple, but he lives in his own temple, which is you. Therefore, accept, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Amen, amen. When God lives in you, then it is our job to take care of the external part of God's temple. Different cultures have different ways of taking care of the body. Some people don't take, many people don't take care of their bodies. God wants you to take care of your bodies. Because he lives there. I want to tell you something. God is more interested that you take care of your physical bodies more than you come. There are people sacrificially coming here and you know, cleaning up this room every once in a while and all that. More than that, God is interested that you take good care of your bodies. Amen. Amen. How to keep the body? How many of you want uh, to know how to keep your bodies? I know you all, you all take good care of your bodies. You clean your bodies, you take a bath three times a day. That's all wonderful. Amen. But there's another, another, another level of keeping your bodies pure for the Lord. Amen. Yeah, just listen to me carefully. Burn the lust of the flesh with the power of the Holy Spirit. 90% of the diseases that people have in the body comes from their habits in eating food. Thank you. 90% of diseases come to people because they are used to a style of living after the age of 50 or 60 it all begins to accumulate and suddenly people are sick suddenly they say the devil beat me and the devil clawed me yesterday night i've been living so holy but the devil came and caught my ears and pastor pray for me you have been accumulating it for the last so many years at least i want the children to know live right because your bodies are the temple of the living God. Amen. Amen. 
rest is God's fullness. I have never gone hungry. Maybe you had only one chapati. But the rest was filled by the Lord. That becomes a blessing for the entire body. This is coming to me again. Are you with me, people of God? Dr. P.G. Vargis, who visits us often, when he started his ministry, he found out that he had diabetic problems. <coughs> <laughs> so he handed over his body to the Lord. He did some works of faith for three or four days. Uh, the diabetes left him. I think at the age of 72, how old is he? 72, 75? Somewhere in his early 70s. I think this is the most busy man at that age. Preaching, 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 morning and evening, traveling from one state of India to another state of India. Once in a while, he comes to the United States of America. I don't know if he has gone to Africa. He goes to the Gulf countries. You cannot think of this man without thinking of how healthy he is in the body. Amen. Writing books, writing uh, so many things, getting in touch. This man is so much at work for the Lord, so much at peace, and such a healthy man. Amen, amen. I spoke to a man of God. I said, why don't you come when you don't have time? Why don't you come to you know, our church and preach, our, preach to our people? So he didn't tell me anything, but his friend told me. Oh, two messages itself is too much one day. Hallelujah. <coughs> Think of Apostle Paul at the age of 60, Amen. who preached throughout the night. Amen. I preach from 11 o'clock to 3 o'clock to 6 o'clock. God is with your body. The Lord is for the body and the body is for the Lord. Church, as you stand up, the Lord is going to release some of you. That the Holy God may begin to manifest His glory through your body. Suddenly your, your body is afresh to the Lord. Say, Lord, in the new covenant, I am so blessed that you should live in me. <coughs> Who am I, Lord? I have abused my body. I have not been faithful in many areas. I have not been sleeping when I should have been sleeping. I have done many kinds of abuse to my body. I ask you forgiveness today. I want to take good care of this body. Lord, the devil is desperately looking for a body. But he will never get a body of his own. But I have a body, a beautiful body, which you have given to me. I thank you for that. Please live in me and use me when people come near me and let them know the glory of the Lord near me. Oh,